The following Zoom session is being recorded and will appear later today on my YouTube channel, Math with Mayo. There are two different classes that may be observing this session. Therefore, when you participate in the Zoom meeting, if you do not wish for your picture or your name to be made public, please leave the video off and use an alias name. If you have questions during the meeting but do not wish to speak, email me at bmayo at ybcc.edu and I'll respond as soon as I can. All right, so today we're going to try and wrap up a objective or whatever it is, uh, four, number four, and get ahead, get started on number five as well. Uh, outcome, that's it. I can never remember the word. Eric, you just showed up to see how many mistakes I'm going to make, didn't you? Yeah, I, I know how it is. Okay. Well, we'll keep I that. just want to know how many knots make. <laughs> there, you there you go. All right. So here we go with problem number 47. Come on. There we go. All right, when you arrive at a family reunion, Uncle Jay has already eaten nine mini hot dogs. So apparently Uncle Jay is a pig, but we won't go into that. All right, he continues to eat them at a rate of five hot dogs per minute. Write an equation in slope intercept form to model the situation where X is the number of minutes after you arrive and H is the total number of hot dogs written. Uh, not written, eaten. That, there's my first mistake, okay. So H equals, and it's gonna be in the form of MX plus B. Nine is the starting value. So that, 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 that's already happened. So that's gonna be like the y-intercept and the rate five hot dogs per minute times the number of minutes. So it's gonna be H equals five X plus nine. Any questions about that? Again, nine is the starting value uh, when you arrive. Five is the rate, so five hot dogs per minute times the number of minutes would give you that. Okay, so H equals, let's see here, five X plus nine. Okay. Then it says to uh, graph your equation. So we're gonna use this. So we're gonna start at nine, which is right there. We're going to go up five, so we'd go up to 14 and over one. Okay, so you follow what I did there. Y intercept, or in this case, the H intercept is at nine. The slope is five, so we'd go up five units from nine, which would be up to 14. So that's up five and over one. All righty. Good to go on. Okay, number 48 coming yeah. up. A town's population has been growing linearly. In other words, according to a linear equation, y equals mx plus b. In 2003, the population was 27,000. And the population has been growing by 2,700 people per year. Write an equation for the population x years after 2003. So the rate of growing or the slope, remember a rate is a slope with units. So we're gonna have what? P equals 2,700X plus the starting value of 27,000. So this is the starting value. This is the rate of change, okay? So, 2,700 X plus 27,000. We good to go? I'll assume you are, unless you yell at me and then I'll stop. All right, number 49, find the total cost of any quantity of bulk candy at $1.39 a pound. Y equals 1.39 X. There's no starting value. Well, the starting value is zero, okay? They aren't starting out with a certain amount of candy. So every time X increases, the price increases by $1.39. So we've got Y equals 1.39 
number 50 coming up. This week, the price of, st of stock DDD is $19 per share. So that's the starting value. For the past several weeks, it has been increasing at a rate of one half dollar per week. So there's your rate of change or your slope. Write an equation in slope intercept form to model the situation where X is the week and P is the price of the stock. So the price is one half X plus 19. Okay, so one half, and then we move it over to get the X uh, plus 19. Oh, and we're supposed to graph it, okay. So graph the equation. I'm gonna start at 19, which is halfway between 18 and 20, okay? So I'm gonna start there. Then I'm gonna go up one unit and over two units. So starting at 19, I'm gonna go up one unit. So I'll go up to 20 and then over to two, okay? So this axis, this, the squares are units or two units. This axis, they're one unit. So, so from 19, I go up one over two. All righty. Moving on to 51. The graph, no, the number of shoe or shoes made at the Spritz factory for H hours can be represented by the equation S equals 64 H. Graph the proportional relationship between the number of hours and the number of shoes made on the graph below. All right, so the starting value, think of this as slope intercept form. Your slope or your rate of change is 64, your Y intercept is zero. Now, this is gonna be a little bit tricky because this axis, it's two units per square. This axis, it's 100 units per square. So I'm gonna start at the origin and then I've gotta go up 64 as I go over one. Hmm. I tried this earlier and I didn't get it the first time because it was like, you kind of have to fudge a little bit. So let me do this, let's, let's see. At zero, we've got zero. At one, we've got 64. At two, we've got 128. At three, we've got, what's see, 192. And at four, we'd have, let's see, 240, 256. Hmm. So let's see. Starting there, at two, it would be 128. Three is 192. Four is 256. I don't, I don't know if I can get that any closer. Yeah. Ah, that's that's kind of iffy. Let's see what happens. Oh, it liked it. I guess I was close enough. If you get something like this on your test, don't panic. Do the best you can. Again, <clears throat> I, I look at all wrong answers on the test to see what happened. So if I see something like this, it's like, oh, they were close. They had to guesstimate. Don't panic. Fifty-two. Oh, all right. We are going to get through four today. <laughs> Fifty-two. A plumber charges a flat fee of one hundred forty-five dollars to show up. So you hire a plumber. That's the starting value, plus an additional sixty-five dollars an hour. Create a linear equation to represent the amount of money the plumber makes for a number for any number of hours he spends at a customer's house. X is the number of hours, Y is the amount of money charged. So Y equals $65 an hour times the number of hours plus the 145 starting amount. Okay. So let's see here. Y equals 65X plus 145. Determine how much the plumber, the plumber make after working for, 
I'm, I'm glad this isn't an English class. Okay, how much the plumber makes after working for three hours at a customer's house. Do I get, do I get to remove some of my math mistakes by making English corrections? Do I, does that even things out? I think so. Thank you, Whitney. I, I appreciate that. That's very kind of you. Unlike Eric, who's just ignoring me. <laughs> Not on the test. <laughs> ah, fine, fine. Okay, so basically we're gonna put three in for X. Y equals 65 times three plus 145. That's what 180, 195 plus 145 is two, 340. I think that's right. Let me take my handy dandy calculator and just make sure. You are correct. Thank you. <laughs> when I first started using a calculator long, long ago, before either of you were even thought of in this universe, <clears throat> I made more mistakes doing it on the calculator than I did doing things by hand. Okay. Oh, after visiting the Titanic, Captain Brain and Mr. Pinky are taking the Alvin submarine back to the surface of the water. They start 1,700 meters below the surface of the water and ascend at 61 meters per hour. Under the water is a negative number. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So let's be careful here with our signs. Uh, so they start there and then they ascend at 61 meters per hour. So it seems to me that the slope is going to be positive because they're going up. Okay. So we're going to have, let's see here. Um, H is... 61 meters, would it be plus 1,700 or would it be minus 1,700? Any thoughts? Minus. What's that? Minus. I, I, minus I think you're saying minus. minus. Yeah. And does that make sense? Well, let's see. At the beginning, when you've gone uh, uh, no meters, if, if M is zero, what's the height? Negative 1,700. And it says under the water is a negative number. So that seems reasonable. Here we go. Uh, H equals 61 M minus 1700. Okay. Uh-oh. Hmm. Mm. Let's see here. Interesting. They said it was wrong. I could peek and look at the right answer, but let's see if we can figure out. Use M for meters. Oh, you know what? Hmm. Let me ask you this. So our two variables are H and M. I'm wondering if I've got them backwards. Which one controls the other one? As time goes by, that's going to affect the the uh, meters. Yeah, I was going to. I want to say the uh, altitude. I guess you're, so, you're ascending about, meters. What's that? You're, you're ascending meters. Right. So as time changes, meters change. Right. Not the other way around. So I think what we need is that because again, uh, let's see here, under the water is negative. Well, let's try that and see what happens. M H. There we go. Let's do another one of those. Give me a chance to redeem myself. All right, basically it's gonna be very much the same, only now we know that we get M equals something times H minus what, 1800? So it's gonna be that. So you're ascending at 54 meters per hour times the number of hours. Ah, 
You know, if I paid more attention to the units in the last one, consider this. M is meters, so meters equals 54 meters per hour times the number of hours minus 1800, whoops, 1800 meters. My point is this, if I write it out this way, what happens? Hours and hours cross out and I have meters, plus or minus meters equals meters. So now the units make sense. So I'll just claim that I did it wrong before so that I could give you this illustration, you know, and, and you'll think, eh, I don't believe him. All right, so. Great, it was a great illustration. Thank you, thank you. Way to <laughs> suck it up, way to suck it up. All right. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oops. Second time's a charm. Okay, so now we are going to go to uh, outcome number five. So give me just a minute here. Yeah, let's see here. If you think I'm slow in changing all these things around, you should have seen me a year or so ago. We'd have to like take a lunch break for me to change the screen. All right. I think everybody's gotten a lot more technology savvy. Yeah, I, I, I felt like a, a IT department person, you know, students would call me or, or text me, email me questions about, you know, how to run the program. And I'm like, I don't know, but then I'd figure it out, you know, and then tell them and, oh, well. I know the pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, question number one. Write five times five in exponential form. So that would be, what, five squared? Okay with that? Yeah, all right, we're one for one, one for one from the line. Expand and multiply each expression. So this is gonna be three. Now, as I recall from an earlier example, I believe that the asterisk key, which is above the eight, was multiplication. Let's see what happens. Hmm. It's the up, uh, it's six. Hold the shift key and oh, six. Oh, oh, oh. Well, but, but I, I want to write three times three times three. It should be the asterisk then. Yeah, let's just try, the asterisk. Let's, let's see what's going on here. Oh, they just want the final. They just want the final answer. That's how they weasel out of it. Ah, okay. Because I was going to expand it and then say equals twenty-seven. So, all right, all right. So three cubed is three times three times three, which is twenty-seven. Yeah, because I tried the asterisk key and it didn't like it. So I'm just supposed to put. 27. Okay. Next one. Eight cube is eight times eight times eight. Well, eight times eight is 64. Eight times eight and then times another eight is 512. Five, 12. And six cubed. Six cubed. Six times six is 36 times six. Uh, let's see, six cubed is 216. So, so like you were saying, waiting on the calculator, you do it like this, and then like this, uh, five, 12, and then like that. But these are all, the, they just want the final answers written in there apparently. Okay. And we're off and running. Ah, okay. Let's take a look at this. Let's see, this is number three.
The question that we need to ask ourselves is a question that the Mariners, the baseball team, often have to ask when they're doing poorly. And that is, where is the base? They never seem to get there, you know, especially last night, but that's another story. So the question is, what's the base of this first expression? It's as if though there were parentheses around just the four. So this is like negative one times four squared or negative one times four times four, which is negative 16. Here, however, the base is negative four. How do I know that? Because the parentheses, the grouping symbol includes the negative, okay? So, the first one is gonna be four times four with a negative sign in front of it. So negative 16. The second one is gonna be negative four times negative four. So positive 16. I noticed on the test, a lot of people got these backwards. So be careful with that. All right, any questions on three? Okay, four. Question number four, well, four squared, that's, that's pretty straightforward. But now here, this is just like this one up here, right? It's like four times four with a negative sign in front of it. We good? Hopefully. All right. Now let's see here, number five. We've got negative eight Q times 4k. I'll write that a little more legibly. Simplify. So we put the numbers together. So it's like negative 8 times 4 times q times k. So negative 32qk. Now, I tend to tell students to write the variables in alphabetical order. It Technically doesn't matter because multiplication is commutative, okay? So it should accept it either way. But as a general rule, that's what I would tell you to do. So negative 32KQ, uh, all right? Let's see what happens if I write QK. It should still be correct. And it is, let's see what they did here. So they didn't bother to change the order and put it alphabetically. And again, why would you do that? I'm going to kind of go off a little tangent here. Let's say I had 2kq plus 4 plus 3qk. So I have three terms. Are there any like terms there that I could combine? The x's. The X's, there's no X in there. Oh, sorry, it was hidden behind me. <laughs> is, my, is my handwriting that bad? A little bit. Yeah, yeah. okay. Are, are, these, are these like terms? Yeah. They are, but it's not as obvious as if we wrote them both. Like that. So by putting them in, always putting them in alphabetical order, you'll be able to identify like terms better than if you don't, whether there's an X in it or not. Okay, let's take a look at number six. Simplify seven X cubed times three X to the fifth power. So this is seven times three times X cubed times X to the fifth power, which is 21. Multiplying powers with the same base, what do you do to the exponents? You add them. Add them, excellent. So 21, oh, no, 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 21. I gotta put the X in first, X to the eighth power. All right, going on to number seven. Simplify the expression completely. I have a quotient raised to a power. 
So the rule is I attach the outside power to both the numerator and the denominator of the quotient. Then in the numerator, a power raised to a power, excuse me, what do you do to the exponents there? Multiply. Multiply them, right. And then two squared is four. All right. So we've got this. So I've got x to the sixth power over four, okay? And again, these kinds of things, before you click submit question, make sure that everything's where you need it to be. Now, having said that, I'll probably screw it up this next problem or something, but I like to show by bad example. Okay, question number eight. So we've got eight y to the ninth times seven y to the eighth times six y to the seventh. So eight times seven times six times y to the ninth times, whoops, y to the eighth times y to the seventh. Let's see. So eight times seven is 56 times six is 336 y to the Nine plus eight is 17, plus seven is 24th power. So here again, I'm adding the exponents. So 336, uh, and it's y. That's another thing that, that uh, you can't get away with. <laughs> you gotta use the right variable, okay? So if it's written in Y and you put an X over here, it's gonna mark it wrong. So pay close attention to the variable. All right. Simplify the expression completely using only one exponent in your answer. Your answer should have only one exponent or it'll be marked incorrect. Okay, thank you for telling me twice. Uh, let's see here, two and a half, four over five all to the fourth power. So I have a combination product quotient raised to an outside power. So this is gonna be negative two to the fourth power, x to the fourth to the fourth power over five to the fourth power. Negative two times negative two is four, times negative two is negative eight, times negative two is positive 16. A power raised to a power, you would multiply the exponents. So x to the 16th power. Five times five is 25, times five is 125, times five is 625. And I can't reduce the 16 over the 625 because 16 is made up of twos or negative twos. And 625 is made up of five, so nothing's gonna reduce there. All right, so we're gonna go with a fraction. In the numerator, we have 16x to the 16th power. In the denominator, 625. Okay, any questions there? All righty, on to number 10. Simplify the expression completely using only one exponent in your answer. So basically, same thing as the previous problem. 3y to the fourth, the quantity square, or excuse me, 3y to the fourth over 2, and the whole thing cubed. So this is 3 cubed, y to the fourth cubed, 2 cubed. 3 cubed, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. y to the fourth cubed is y to the 12th, and two cubed, two times two is four, times two is eight. And so here again, we've got 27 y to the 12th power over eight. Continuing on. Uh, 
number 11. Simplify the expression completely. 30 x to the 14th power, y to the 13th power, over 40 x to the seventh power, y to the seventh power. So individually, this piece, I could reduce it down to 3 fourths, dividing the top and the bottom both by 10. This piece, dividing two powers with the same base, you subtract the bottom exponent from the top exponent. So that's going to be x to the 14 minus 7, which is 7. So x to the 7th on top. And then same thing here, y to the 13 minus 7 power, y to the 6th. OK, now I can write this like it is there, or I could write it like this. So I can put the variables in the numerator of the fraction or kind of write them out after the coefficient. Either way is correct. OK, in fact, let me show you. Let, let's see what they've got here. So they do it the second way. Well, let's do it the first way because people say, you know, is that the same thing? So this would be 3x to the seventh power. Now I've got to get, let's see here, and then y. Ah, but look where that y is. It thinks it's an exponent on the x. So somehow, let's try the right arrow key. There we go. The right arrow key moves it down. I y. believe you can also use the space bar. Ah, it, it, it moves it down? OK. Yeah. Because of going with ordered pairs and trying to put a space after the comma and it kicks it outside the parentheses, I've kind of been gun shy or, or on the space bar. But thank you for that. Uh, good to know. It, yeah. And as you've probably guessed, I, I would confess that I have not used the stuff that much. OK, so this is correct. But then also, be, what? Will there be an example of where it's a negative? I have problems with that during the chapter. Well, there's a negative what? Well, um, like when you have the bottom, like x7 is actually 14 and 7 on the top, because then you have to flip them. Oh, OK, OK. Uh, let's see here. There should be. Here's some. Is that what you're talking about? On 17? Uh, yeah, that should work. Yeah, it's coming up. We'll get there. <laughs> All righty. Anyway, so we could do it this way, or you could do it that way. All right. Just wanted to clarify that. Okay. Number 12. Simplify, write the expression in exponential form, use the caret key in the answer. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay, let's see. Three squared times three cubed, the whole thing cubed. Well, inside you'd have three to the fifth, right? And then you'd have that all cube, so that would be 3 to the 15th power. So I'm assuming they want this. 3 to the, oh. <laughs> I, I used that, and it, and it didn't. Um, hmm. Let's see here. Simplify and write the expression in exponential form. Use the caret key in the answer. And yet they actually want the whole thing multiplied out. I cry foul on this one. They are not having you write an answer. What they should say is, is you know, multiply it out. Because I'm not using that in the answer. I tried it and it wouldn't let me. You follow what I'm saying? So, so as far as I'm concerned, based yeah. on their instructions, that's what I should have written. You see what I'm saying there? Following these instructions. Yeah. But in fact, 
they not only didn't do that, but they wanted the whole thing multiplied out. Again, I cry foul, something to, for me to change around next time, because this, this is the first time I've ever used this set of problems, in case you're wondering. But let's see what three to the 15th power is. And I get that. Maybe, maybe what they're trying to say is that I need to use this on my calculator to get the answer. But again, all right. Uh, let's see here. So we'll go ahead and fix that. One, four, three, four, eight, nine, zero, seven. All right, now here, simplify and write the expression in exponential form. Okay, I'm nervous based on what they did before. So let's see here. This is still problem number 12. I've got four cubed cubed times four squared over four to the fourth power. Four cubed cubed would be four to the ninth power. Four to the ninth power times four to the second power would be four to the 11th power. And I've got nah, too many fraction bars. And I've got four to the fourth power in the denominator. So that would be four to the 11 minus four, which is seven. So again, based on their instructions, I would claim that's the answer, but I'll bet you that they multiplied it all out. Yep. So if I take four to the seventh power, four to the seventh power, I get one, six, three, eight, four. Okay. Hmm. That just baffles me. I'm, I'm going to write this down for future because I may want to go in and, and get rid of those questions. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, 13. The expression equals cy to the e, where the coefficient c is blank and the exponent e of y is. Okay, so basically what we have to do is take this thing and simplify it. So I'm going to get 4 to the 4th, y to the 5th to the 4th over 4y cubed. Now, careful, notice this outside 4 only applies to the numerator. For it to apply to the denominator, it would have had to have been written like that, and it isn't, okay? So, 4 to the 4th, y to the 20th over 4y cubed. I was tempted to take 4 to the 4th power and multiply it out, and then I thought, wait a minute, though. That's going to end up being, what, 4 to the third power, right? Because there's an implied 1 on the bottom 4 as an exponent. So 4 to the 4 over 4 to the 1 is 4 to the 3 power. And then y to the 17th, 20 minus 3. But 4 cubed is 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 is 64. So my final answer would be 64 y to the 17th power. Now let's go back. So the coefficient is going to be 64, and the exponent on y is going to be 17. All righty. Okay. Evaluate the expression. 5 cubed plus 5 to the fifth power. Let's do a comparison contrast, make this into an English assignment. What about that? I see that smirk. 5 cubed times 5 to the fifth power, wouldn't that be 5 to the eighth power? Yes. But this 
is not your father's Oldsmobile, okay? We're not in Kansas anymore, Dorothy. So what I've got here is five cubed, which is 125, plus five to the fifth power, five to the fifth power, which is 3,125. So then I've got to add the two of them together and I get 3,250. But I don't get whatever five to the eighth power ends up being. So again, pay close attention. You when you're multiplying two powers with the same base, you add the exponents. When you're adding two powers, then you've got other things to worry about. All right, so 3,250. Moving on, number 15. 4 over negative 4 to the fifth power. All right, order of operations. Wouldn't you start inside the grouping symbol? What's 4 divided by negative 4? Isn't that just negative 1? OK, well, what's negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1? You've got an odd number of negative factors, so it's going to be negative one. Okay. Now you could rewrite this as four to the fifth over negative four to the fifth and go through all that, but you don't need to. You can simplify inside of there first. In fact, that's what you should do. All righty. <laughs> Here we go with some more more uh, directions, I can hardly wait. Uh, let's see. I shouldn't be so negative. Write the expression with positive exponents and simplify as much as possible. For example, instead of one over nine squared, enter one over 81. All right, four to the negative one power would be one over four to the positive one power which is simply one fourth. All right, with that, we're finally getting into those negative exponents like Whitney wanted. All right. Number. 17, evaluate the expression, four to the negative three power over six cubed. Well, that would be six cubed over four cubed, right? Because this would be like one over four cubed times six cubed, which again, would end up like that. You okay with that? So far, we're not done, but so far. So, so far, let's see. what's that? Sorry. So far, so good. Okay. So we got six cubed. So six cubed is 216. Four cubed is 64. Let's see here. 216 divided by 64 is 3.375. Now, hmm. Put that in there and see what happens. Mathematically, it's correct, but I don't, and it doesn't say anything about not using a decimal. So let's see what happens. Oh, we took it. Oh, they did it. Well, you know, all right. I was afraid they were going to give us a fraction in reduced form or something, but which, yeah, okay. Simplify the expression completely. Hmm, interesting that they feel like they have to say completely. I know you're not used to the teacher uh, critiquing the assignment. Simplify the expression completely. Okay, so 3 fourths to the negative 2 power is equal to 4 thirds to the positive 2 power. Are you okay with that move? Yes. So then we get 4 squared over 3 squared, which is 16 over nine, 
Okay. Number 19 coming up. Simplify the expression completely. X to the negative eight over Y to the negative six becomes Y to the positive six over X to the positive eight. So they both get switched on sides to change the sign of the exponent. So we've got, let's see here. I'm gonna try something fancy here. Y to the six power and then, oh, no, it won't let me do it that way. Okay, fine. I was gonna see if I could just use the, the fraction key thing on the main keyboard. Okay, so y to the sixth power over x to the eighth power. Okay. Ah, okay. I like number 20. You might not like it, but let me explain. So, What's the base for the exponent of negative two? What's the base of that exponent? It's just the X, it's not 10 X. If it was 10 X, it would have to be written like that, okay? So what that means is this is gonna go upstairs and that's gonna stay downstairs. So the 10 has an exponent of a positive one. It doesn't need to be moved around to change the sign of the exponent. You okay with that? Yeah. All right. So now I've got X squared. Oh, I, there we go. X squared over 10. Okay. Continuing on. 21. Four Z to the 10th, the whole thing squared times Z to the negative 12. Okay. So the 10 inside the parentheses only applies to the Z, but the two outside the parentheses applies to everything inside. So this is four squared Z to the 10th squared times Z to the negative 12th power so far, which is now 16 Z to the 20th times z to the negative 12th power, which is 16 z to the 20 plus negative 12, which is eight. So I get 16 z to the eighth power. All righty, I'm going to stop there. So let's see, we'll pick it up tomorrow on outcome number five, problem number 22. Let's see how many problems we have left here. Yeah. Okay, if we don't finish tomorrow, Monday, I'll wrap it up. If we do finish tomorrow, Monday will just be a free for all. I'll show up and say, hey, we can look at anything you want from any of the objectives or the outcomes. And then Tuesday's your final exam, okay? And starting Monday, there won't be any office hour because Monday finals week, there isn't actually any official class meeting. I just added those the extra time in case we needed it. Um, but anyway, so there we have it for today. Let me stop the recording. And...